World of Warcraft Classic Old School RuneScape. Now what came to mind when I mentioned those games? Nostalgia. There's this trend of creating older games that, whether we like them or not, evoke powerful feelings of nostalgia when we look back and consider playing them. The two examples I'm going to use and compare are WoW Classic and Old School RuneScape. I'm going to be taking a look into what initially made these games successful and why one seemingly died and the other succeeded. I'll be comparing the failures of WoW Retail to RuneScape 3 and WoW Classic to Old School RuneScape. Before I begin, if you enjoy this kind of content, hit the like button and subscribe for similar videos in the future. Thank you. Alright, let's begin. First, we have to ask ourselves, what would drive a developer to create an older version of their own game? Now, these are all companies, and every company wants to make money, so this can easily be answered with reason number one, profit. However, profit is in turn driven by player demand. Now, to get to the bottom of this, we need to ask ourselves, what drives that player demand for a retro version of a game such as Classic WoW and Old School RuneScape? I can think of two reasons lack of satisfaction with the direction of the current game, and pure nostalgia. In a paradoxical nature, the players want the game they play to continually have new updates, new features, and places to explore. However, a consequence of innovation is potentially creating or updating content that the players may dislike. For example, World of Warcraft has changed so much over the years. It used to be a game that required you to grind and work towards max level. There were no shortcuts or easy methods of obtaining that goal. Today, there are level boosts and ways to expedite the leveling process such that it's not unheard of for a player to obtain max level in a matter of hours. In contrast to WoW back in the day, there wasn't really anything you could achieve of value by paying your way for it, or at least it wasn't as accessible as it is today. In today's WoW, you can pay for tokens that can be exchanged to get you as much gold as you want. That gold can be used to purchase some of the best gear and in addition pay for carries to achieve what people would consider to be the endgame content. Mythic raiding or PvP carries for example. Current WoW players are also unhappy with the constant addition of borrowed power systems that invalidate your hard work every time an expansion comes out. In addition, there are secondary systems like Covenants, Renown Level, Grinding Stygia, The Maw, Torghast, and others that frustrate players because they feel like they have to do content that isn't fun in order to progress. Also, the progress in your secondary system does not carry over to your alt account, which makes redoing that process that much worse. It's like they want you to redo all your hard work on your second character just to improve their player retention rates and waste your time. So players were angry and looked back. They looked back to a better time, a simpler time. When there were no level boosts and you earned your progress in a way that was fun and most importantly meaningful the release of classic wow was ultra popular and saw a rise in players that wow has not seen for seen in a long time it was great while it lasted however players already completed the content before they've long since hyper optimized the gear the roots of progression and everything else such that the content has become a joke to complete players quickly became bored and moved on to something else in terms of P pve now, the PvP scene took a different turn as players aimed for higher rank, even in the pool of toxicity that is Classic WoW PvP. Then, level boosts in Classic WoW were introduced, the cash shop, store mounts, and WoW tokens in Classic World of Warcraft. This was supposed to be the game that didn't have any of those features from Retail WoW. It was supposed to stay true to the original. That's when players had their last straw. Even the most popular Classic WoW player, Mad Season, quit. He said that he couldn't continue making content he's not passionate about, because, and it's because they've ruined the game. He said, I'd rather have a channel that's dead than one that isn't alive, in his No King Rules Forever video. And those words cut deep. Now, contrast the road that Classic WoW went down with what Old School RuneScape did. For those of you that don't know, there are two versions of RuneScape. RuneScape 3 is a continuation of the original game after a massive update changed how combat was played known as the Evolution of Combat update. A lot of players were frustrated with this update in particular and so Old School RuneScape was born, a version of the game that essentially allowed you to play the game the exact way it was in 2007. Now again, what was the driving force for the creation of Old School RuneScape? It was a combination of dissatisfaction with the direction of the current game and pure nostalgia. Players weren't happy with the evolution of combat system. They missed their old tick-based combat that was much simpler and easier to follow. Just browsing the subreddit back then and there are comments like EOC or evolution of combat ruined all forms of pures, removed weapon variants, removed special comboing, and changed the combat level calculator. All things that destroyed the PvP scene. 
A petition was created by some of the more well-known RS3 players in 2012, and this created so much headway and sparked so much interest in the community that RuneScape CEO at the time, Mark Gerhard, offered to create a poll in which, if a certain number of players voted for the creation of an old version of RuneScape, namely a saved file of it from 2007, that they would proceed with making the game and even dedicate a small team of developers to provide updates for it. The poll resulted in 449,000 people showing their interest for 2007scape, also known as Old School RuneScape. The Old School servers launched on the 22nd of February 2013. Some users still had gripes about how the game had been split in two. Many people assumed interest would wane once players took their rose-tinted glasses off and saw the cracks in the six-year-old game they were playing. So far, these players have been proven wrong, with the player population of Old School RuneScape being far greater than RuneScape 3. Now, what did Old School RuneScape do differently that kept their players happy that Classic World of Warcraft didn't? I mean, clearly, the Old School RuneScape development team truly listened to their players, and one of the most unique things I've ever seen in an MMORPG implemented successfully, there is an in-game voting system in which every single player has the right to vote for new content. They legit ask you if you want certain pieces of content, like a new quest or skill to come out, and you vote yes or no, or just skip the question. To be clear, a supermajority of 75% yes is required for the content to pass. For example, they might ask, should we release Monkey Madness 2, which is a quest, uh, as described in the dev blog, and you can choose whether yes, no, or skip question. But I guess the negative aspect of this is that some people describe this polling system as a double-edged sword, as the results of the majority may not necessarily be what's best for the game, and sometimes the percent required for something to pass can be so close to that 75% supermajority and fail that it leaves most of the player base unsatisfied with the results. In fact, there are recent polls that sparked outrage by some because of a new skill called warding received a 66% yes and a 33% no, ultimately being rejected even though 66% of the player base wanted it. Some might say this isn't good for the game, however, this is truly what listening to the community is all about. It's actual democracy implemented into a video game, and I hope other games start to follow in Old School RuneScape's footsteps. Now, compared to WoW Classic, Old School RuneScape didn't allow level boosts, which would have completely ruined the game, but it did introduce RuneScape bonds in order to combat third-party gold sellers in real-world real trading. In terms of claiming that Old School RuneScape is a pay-to-win game, most players would agree with the following statement. I don't think it's that huge of a problem, because a vast majority of anything meaningful in this game requires grinding at the end of the day. It's still bad for the integrity of the game, but within the context of gold farming and real world trading, it's definitely more ethical to just buy a bond from Jagex than it is to support real world trading directly. Technically, if a player was desperate enough to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on old school bonds and then subsequently sell them on the grand exchange, they could pay to win their way to some of the best gear in the game. However, most players would agree that grinding and working your way towards your goals is one of the main ways players derive satisfaction. Also, the dollar to gold ratio is not worth it for the average player, so most people don't consider this a pay to win system. Comparing old school RuneScape to WoW Classic again, the fact that these polls allow for players to continuously update the game as they see fit, it allows even an old version of the game to evolve. WoW Classic became easily optimized, and players were left with a feeling of boredom once the endgame content was finished. In Old School RuneScape, a stream of new content chosen by the players is continuously released. I think this is the main reason why Old School RuneScape never failed like WoW Classic did. This new content provides players with something to do since it's updated on a regular basis. Not only did Old School RuneScape release new content, but that content was chosen by its player base. Most recently, a new Blizzard survey just went out to random recipients asking the community for feedback about the possibility of classic fresh servers, updates to classic, and a preferred phase cadence after launch. This new server may have some quality of life updates different from the original classic, such as more difficult raid bosses, no more world buffs in raids, faster XP raids, summoning stones, etc, etc. I think what would really take Classic Fresh to the next level would be introducing new content specific for Classic Fresh, much in the same way that Old School RuneScape releases new content different from RuneScape 3. For me personally, I have high hopes for Classic Fresh. I think Classic Fresh developers 
want to listen to the WoW community, similarly to how Old School RuneScape devs listen to their community. If it led to success with Old School RuneScape, I just I don't see why it wouldn't lead to success with Classic Fresh. If a similar type of democratic voting system was introduced to Classic Fresh, it would allow the player base to hold the devs responsible for making the content that we want. When we vote for content, we'll be able to make the World of Warcraft that we always wanted. That's it for the video guys. I want to thank everyone for watching. If you did like the video, do remember to hit the like button and subscribe for similar videos in the future. Peace.